The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. About eight years ago, I had the privilege to speak in a community down south in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, right off the Mississippi River. You could go to the Bass Pro Shop. You could go up the tallest standing elevator, freestanding elevator in North America, and you could see a nice chunk of the Mississippi River. And one of the highlights of my trip, I met an elderly Yid. His name was Yeshua La Kutna. And now when I heard that name, I was shaken because Yeshua La Kutna is the name of one of the pre-war Polish Torah giants who actually my great-great-grandfather was a student of. And this individual who was in his 90s was named after him. And he told me one of the most moving stories I ever heard. He was born in New York in 1920, during the Depression. His father came from Warsaw, his mother came from Galicia, and his parents were so poor, they couldn't put food on the table. So what would he do? He would go buy ice cream, he would get dry ice, and he would go to the central bus station by Lincoln Terrace Park, and when the trucks would stop, he would sell the drivers ice cream, and at the end of the entire day, he would make a dollar, and that was like a week's salary. And he would bring it home to his parents to support the family. He said he was poor, but his rabbi and his students in Yeshiva Chai in Berlin were even more poor. And in 1930, the rabbeim were starving, literally starving to death. There were people who owned big businesses, they couldn't put food on the table, they sold buttons, shoelaces, apples, handkerchiefs. handkerchiefs. So back in the 30s, a quart of milk, five cents. A loaf of bread, two cents. A New York Times, one cent. That's exactly what it's worth. <laughs> one day, they called me. Sorry, I know it's California, but what can I say? <laughs> the yeshiva called me into the office. And the yeshiva said, look, your parents owe six dollars of tuition. If you don't bring six dollars in tomorrow, don't come back to school. And Yeshua Kutna said, you know, that was actually the fate of many, many of the children. They were told either you bring in the old tuition or you don't come back to yeshiva. And those boys who were not allowed back to the yeshiva, and they went to public school, they were lost forever they have no Jewish descendants today. But we came home. Dad, Mom, how are we going to pay the six dollars? We had no silver candlesticks, there was nothing in the house but junk. Dad owned one suit. It was a bad suit. It was an ugly suit, but it was the only suit where the jacket matched the pants. So Mom said, Dad, go take your suit to the pawn shop and maybe he'll give you a few bucks. So dad went to the pawn shop. He said, sir, I need to send my kids to school. Six bucks, please. The pawn shop owner said, six bucks, this is worth about $3.23. He said, I, I have to send my kids to school. The guy gave Yeshua Mikutna's father six dollars. And we went back to Yeshiva. This was one of the most moving experiences in my life. Now I and my brothers knew what Tyra meant to our family. Others were not as fortunate. Had we not brought in the six dollars, I would not have today dozens and dozens and dozens of Torah observant great-grandchildren. My father was never able to buy his suit back. But you know what Hashem gave him in return? God gave him Five generations of Torah observant Jews, God fearing Jews, Erlech Yidin. Aaron HaKoyen wore eight garments. A regular Koyen wore four garments. My family also had Big Day Kahuna. We sold them for six dollars. It was the best six dollars we ever spent. The, just, the choices that we make. The decisions that we make reverberate forever and ever and ever. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.